African Renaissance. The concept that the African people and nation shall overcome the current challenges confronting the continent and achieve cultural, scientific, and economic renewal is here. And with young men and women taking the lead, some call them the new school heroes. We call them under 40 CEOs. Dr. Taya Oyedeji is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer at Media Perspectives, the number one media independent agency. Media Perspectives is an advertising, planning and buying agency. In Taya's words, we help clients expose their messages to the right audience while optimizing their budgets to ensure that they are spending money where they need to and also effectively. Taya has also worked in the banking industry at First City Monument Bank where he was an assistant general manager. Welcome to Under 40 CEOs, Dr. Tayo Oyedeji. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, there's something I read on your blog that I feel may spark some controversy. He says, um, follow your passion is the stupidest advice ever. How so? <laughs> well, because you know, we're all passionate about different things. Okay. And so I have a friend that's very passionate about selling drugs. <laughs> it's a valid passion. It's a valid passion. Yeah. And so if, if you were to tell him to follow his passion, mm -hmm. then he will become the biggest drug dealer in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that while, follow your passion is, is, while, while following your passion is important, it's, but yeah. it's probably more important to, to consider finding and working in an industry where you mm -hmm. can thrive in one way okay. or the other. Okay. And so if your passion is music, it's good to follow music, but on the side you want to do something that can also help you be successful mm -hmm. um, as a person. You see very few, one in maybe a thousand musicians become successful. Very true. The odds are better if you're an accountant. Maybe mm -hmm. 200 out of a thousand accountants mm -hmm. are more likely to be successful. Okay. And so my view is that while it's important to follow your passion, it's also important to, to do something that will help you be financially successful. Now. I know you know that more brands are hiring uh, brand managers to basically sort of do your work. Um, would you say that um, your industry is going the way of the fax machine, even threatened by extinction? Um, no, not at all. I think um, what leads to death is a lack, a lack of growth. So okay. if you don't grow eventually, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. um, but we are very deliberate about innovating and improving the things we do on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. And so what you see is across our people, processes, and strategies, mm. it's, um, it keeps getting better. So media perspectives today is much better than what we were last year. Mm. What we've done is we've invested heavily into our people. So we have the, the best training module in Nigeria, the Media Perspective School of Media. And what we've done is we've curated content from all over the world mm -hmm. um, to sort of help our people develop in the things they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm. Our processes are technologically enabled. So, for instance, we have clients that are based in London, in Paris, in different parts of the world. Oh, wow. And they could log into our system and see what we're doing in Nigeria on a day-to-day -day basis. And so that level of investment is something that a lot of, of our other colleagues are not doing. Mm. And we've invested in ensuring that we have the best media strategies in this market. Okay. And so when you're growing on a day-to-day -day basis, our clients see the value we bring them. Do you think that digital media is a real threat to traditional media? I think it is, because everything is digital. Um, even if you, you, you know that even the TV industry is sort of about to transition to digital TV. Mm -hmm. And so increasingly, um, you have to be digitally savvy to win mm -hmm. in our industry. And mm -hmm. we have one of the best digital teams in all of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We're the only agency, for instance, that has six Google certified digital professionals. Oh, wow. Now, Google certification is sort of the gold standard for media professionals. Mm. A lot of our colleagues have one or two people. We have six mm. because we're pushing our people on a day-to-day -day basis to become digital specialists. Okay. And so every single person that works here understands digital and it affects and influences the way we think about um, advertising for our clients. That's amazing. Now, what are those values that are really important to you and to your firm? Yeah. Um, I think we have core, four core values, um, mm -hmm. and that's the first of yours is professionalism. Mm -hmm. We believe in doing things the right way. Okay. Um, we're also passionate about the job. Okay. And so um, 
everything we do flows with a sense of passion to deliver for our clients. Mm -hmm. Integrity is key, otherwise mm -hmm. we won't be successful. Mm -hmm. So people trust us with their budgets, and so okay. they want to be sure that we're doing the right things, the things we said we'll do with it. And so the way I see integrity is you can't just say I have integrity, you have to show and mm -hmm. display that. Mm -hmm. And the fourth, which is a core value for me and for the firm itself and mutual respect. Oh. Now, what you find in the industry is that a lot of people that are good are not very nice. <laughs> and a lot of people that are nice are, are not, not very good. good. And so what we want to do on a constant basis is to be both nice and good. Mm. And so we respect people, we respect media suppliers, we respect our clients, we respect the people that work in this agency. You'll never hear raised voices here. Mm. What we try to do is to speak to people we respect, knowing that when you respect people, they'll respect you back. And that breeds a good place to work for everybody that works here. This is Under 40 CEOs. Okay, now you've got a PhD in uh, media management. Yeah. And you came to media perspectives at such a critical time in its history. Now, what was your strategy to reposition um, media perspectives as a foremost, even number one, media brand in Nigeria? Um, I think there are three core things that have helped us in our mm. growth. Um, we have a great board of, manage, uh, board of directors. We've worked very hard on our internal processes mm. and then we've sort of improved our strategic process, our media planning and buying process. Mm. And so um, what I'd like to say is that success is the consequence of doing the right things. And so mm. we've sort of done a number of things right. And so clients are saying that and coming to us and bringing business to us in that regard. In your second year, you know, whilst pursuing your doctoral degree, you were named a Harvey Fellow. Yeah. And you were even awarded a prize money of about $15,000. Yeah. What do these um, accolades, honors, and awards mean to you? Well, personally, I think it's, um, it's just a consequence, again, of doing the right things. Um, I, I remembered when I was in school, I, I focused very squarely on my education. I spent a lot more time than a lot of my other colleagues studying, preparing, and sort of um, ensuring that I did well academically. And so by the time I finished um, my PhD program, for instance, I had received about four global awards. Wow. which were sort of gold standards of this guy is doing better than a lot of his colleagues. And it was actually weird because um, I was one of the few black people that got a lot of those things. You know, a lot of my colleagues were, were Caucasians and they got, wow. you know, a lot of this. But I was the one African person that, mm. that, that got a lot of that. I, I don't think it's because I'm special. I think it's just because I, I worked really hard. Um, and if, if a young person is, is looking at this and wondering what does it take to get these global acclaims and things like that, it's not, it's not being smart or being sharp, it's mm. working hard that sort of differentiates people at the top level. You've always been sort of like on an up and up. You know, have you ever been in the valley at any point? Yeah. Um, when I, <laughs> this is very interesting because it's recent. Um, mm -hmm. When I joined Media Perspectives, um, we, we terminated our affiliation with, with Carrot. Okay. Because this used to be Carrot Media Perspectives. Yes. We're actually in the process of transitioning to a new global, um, a new global group that is much better than where we used to be. But after we terminated our, our affiliation with Carrot, we lost about 35% of our business. Oh, wow. Um, that was within my first three months on the job. Hmm. And I said, oh my God, why did I take this job? <laughs> it seems like I had made a really bad mistake. Mm. Um, the good news is that that was the lowest point of my time here. Mm. But within about six to seven months, we had recouped back all the businesses we lost. And we've worked. right now, I believe we're even doing better. Okay, doing the right things um, ensures that you're a success. But then you may have done some wrong things that ensured that you failed yeah. as a leader. What have you done wrong in the past? Very good. I think the biggest leadership mistake I've made was in trying to change processes and procedures before changing hearts. Mm. Uh, because I got, I got to lead an organization when I was in the States, and um, the organization was, was in trouble. Mm. It, was, it, was, it was floundering. Wow. And so when I became the leader, I knew 
so many things had to change. So many policies, so many procedures, the way they did things had to change. And so within a week, I started making those changes. But the people pushed back. Mm. And so it almost became a mess because I hadn't won their hearts as leaders. Mm -hmm. And here I was saying, this, this, this that you're doing were not right. And so what I learned from that is that, you know, your job as a manager or as a leader is to first win the hearts of the people. Mm. And then when you win the hearts of the people, they would help you implement mm. the changes that you want to do. And so I'm grateful that I had that experience before I came to Media Perspectives. Mm. Because when I came to Media Perspectives, what I kept saying was, guys, we're not going to change anything fundamentally because it's already a successful agency. What we're going to do will be to make incremental changes that will make us much better and do things better. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the biggest leadership error I made was, was in that organization where I went in and I wanted to be, um, to be the savior. Leaders are not called to be saviors. They're called to lead people to, to do better. This is Under 40 CEOs. Tayo has been described by his peers as a great researcher and one extremely skilled at delegation and managing people. Now, I mean, you've, you've told, uh, told me about uh, how, as a leader, you want to warm your heart, your way into the hearts of the people you're leading mm -hmm. um, with mutual respect and all of that. But how would you um, describe your leadership style? Mm -hmm. So my leadership style is to harness the power mm -hmm. of everybody that works here to ensure that we're bringing out good out outputs as a firm. Okay. And so I, I don't presume to think I can do everything. I'm okay. sure I can't. Mm -hmm. And so when we bring everybody together and we bring their ingenuities, their ideas, their, their processes, their thoughts together, we're a much better firm. And that's my view of leadership. Now, what are those key um, skill sets that a leader, a CEO, um, needs to acquire mm -hmm. or be naturally endowed with? Um, to manage people. Now, I'm going to say this, it's a personal philosophy and it's mm. different from a lot of other people in, in Nigeria especially. But my, my view is that a CEO has to care about the people that work for him or her. Because mm. when you care about people, then they are freed to give you 100% all mm. the time. Mm. Because so they're not just working because they have to come to work. Mm. They love coming to work and they love working for you. Mm. And so even when you're not there, you know that they're giving their 100% because mm. they're like, oh, I, this guy, man, I, 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 can't, I can't mess that up. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that, I think, is a huge thing that works for me. What's the current um, business structure for Media Perspectives? We have four core co functional areas. Mm. So the first is operations, which okay. is everything from planning to strategy. Uh, which is headed by a gentleman called Jude Odia, mm. really good strategic guy. Um, we have the buying function and procurement function, uh, mm. which is headed by a lady um, mm. called Ngozi Uzodema. She's a, she's a really great person. Um, Kolaido heads our finance and okay. admin, okay. and then Dolako Gumbambo heads um, business development. Um, and so those four key areas sort of then have multiple layers under them of, of people doing great things. Um, our, our operations team, I believe, is, I mean, those guys, they're sort of, they're some of the best people in Nigeria, mm. in our field. Great. And so that, that makes me really happy. Okay, now this is a, a question that a lot of um, young, budding entrepreneurs have asked me over time. What is the best way for a budding, young entrepreneur with an amazing idea to raise funding? For me, funding is not important. It's not the most important thing to raise. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you've studied entrepreneurship, um, there's, a, there's actually a model called the Lean Startup model. Mm -hmm. Lean Startup. And what the model says is that you should always start with what we call an MVP, which is a minimum viable product. Mm -hmm. So for instance, you want to start a restaurant. Mm -hmm you probably w wouldn't do well if you were to go to Ikoyi with five, 500 million naira to start a huge restaurant, if that's the first time you're managing a restaurant. Mm -hmm. So it actually may be better to get 500,000 naira mm -hmm. and go to Oshodi, 
mm. and make sure that you really can run a restaurant mm -hmm. before you take it to the next level. Mm. And so the mistake I think a lot of people make is they go ahead and invest heavily into their dreams, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And those dreams don't work because they haven't had the grounding and expertise mm. to take it to the next level. Okay, so back to media perspectives, where are you hoping to lead the firm to? What's the destination, say, in another five years? Outside of, outside of South Africa, I think we're sort of the, the, the largest media independence agency in, in, in the rest of Africa right now, mm. I think. But the goal is, um, is, to, is to dominate all of Africa, mm. uh, including um, South Africa and Egypt and a lot of MENA, uh, Middle East and North America, and, and North Africa. And so what we have to do as a firm is not to focus on growing, but to focus on doing good work for our clients because they're the best advertisements we have. Mm. So for instance, um, we just won an account recently, and the only way we won it was because one of our clients has a friend that's bringing a new business into Nigeria. Mm. And the guy said, if you're going to do media advertising in Nigeria, you'd better speak to media perspectives. Mm. That's the way we win accounts. Wow. And so we're not focused on growing. We're focused on doing good work for our clients. Now, what has been your biggest letdown so far in your career? I think. It's not professional, really, mm -hmm. but I was hoping that by this stage of my life and career, I would have had a much bigger impact on the country and the way we're doing things as a nation, so particularly in the ed education area to start with, mm -hmm. and then across board in terms of processes and procedures for, for, for the country. So I, I was hoping that by this stage of my life, I would have been able to have a more systemic effect on Nigeria as a, as a culture. I remember when I applied to Oxford for my MBA, um, one of the questions that would, was asked was, what would you like to do after your MBA? Mm. And I said, I was living in the US then, and I said, I'd love to return to Nigeria and make a true systemic change mm. across the country. That hasn't happened yet, but I, I hope eventually it will. This is Under 40 CEOs. Tayo is also married to an architect, Bukola Oyedeji, and his father to two amazing children. How do you balance being the MD of the number one media, buying, planning, and all of that agency in Nigeria with being a brother, a, a husband, a son? You know, how do you balance all of that? Yeah. Um, the way I see it is you make time for what's important. And so if your family is important, you mm. sort of have to make time to spend with them. Okay. And so what I try to do is to, is to compartmentalize different parts of my life. So there's the professional life, there's the family life, there's mm. also, I mean, a couple of other things that I do to contribute to society. Mm. And so if my family is important, I make out time to be with them. Mm. If my job is important, I make out time to do it. So our industry is notorious <laughs> for late hours. Mm -hmm. But what I do is I make out time to have vacation with my family, to, to, to do things with the kids so okay. that they remember their dad as someone that, um, that likes them and spends time with them. Okay. And so it's tough, but I mean, if it's important, you gotta do it. This is Under 40 CEOs. And then we're losing up as I attempt to find out things that inform Tyre's lifestyle choices. What do you like to eat? Amala. Amala. I'm pounded, yeah. What would you say your fashion style is? Conservative. Um, what CEOs are you looking up to at the moment? Globally or in Nigeria? Both. Both. I actually, I like Lisa, I don't know who or not. Um, Lisa is the CEO of Stockholm um, USA. Um, locally, I absolutely love Mr. Shobanjo, Mr. Bjorn Shobanjo. Okay, what's your favorite uh, brand to wear? For some reason, I like Tommy Hilfiger. Your favorite car to drive? Car to drive, Lexus. Okay, what's your favorite travel destination? Hawaii. Your favorite book of all time? The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Pell. What are you currently reading? I'm reading Good to Great right now by Jim Collins. Lastly, what makes you happy? Fulfilling my goals because my goal in life is to make life better for everybody around me. And so when I'm able to help somebody become better, it makes me really happy. Thank you for coming on Under 40 CEOs, Dr. Tayo Oyedeji. Thank you so much. All Thanks right. for having me.